for me too, like watching her figure all of this out because it's really been the, the first time that she's been able to do it in in a secure relationship, like she said. And watching her grow into that, and I keep telling her she she glows and shines so brightly when she's super happy. And if that includes someone else too, then that's great. Like, awesome. I full I think we fully support each other's growth and happiness, and that for me has been the major key in all of this. Welcome to normalizing non monogamy the podcast where we interview incredible people from across the entire spectrum of non-monogamy to hear their fascinating stories. We strive to bring guests on the show who have a healthy approach to non-monogamy. However, it's important to remember that everyone does it a little bit differently, and the views and opinions expressed by our guests do not necessarily reflect our own. Additionally, we produce this show for entertainment purposes only. Please be aware that we aren't doctors or therapists. Consult a medical professional for anything regarding your health that you might learn about on the show. Enjoy. Welcome to episode 209. We're Finn and Emma, and today we have an amazing interview with Wendy and Jenna. They are exploring a dynamic where one of them is monogamous and the other one is polyamorous. And this is one of the first episodes where we've had both of the partners on the show. Yeah, we've had dynamics. uh, We've had the monopoly dynamic before, but typically uh, one uh, usually just the, the polyamorous person, uh, half of the dynamic comes on. And this is one of those rare times where we got both of them and it's, it's a fantastic discussion. It is amazing and we're super excited about it. So thank you to both, uh, Wendy and Jenna for coming on and sharing and just for, for all of your vulnerability. Um, such a great conversation about insecurity, hierarchy, respect, and just the like, the love and energy between these two. Is, I was going to say, there's so much fun and there's so much love in this whole conversation. Yeah, it's it's off the chart. So stick around um, past our intro, which we know is your favorite part of the show. <laughs> Clearly. For the interview, which is, you know, second to the intros. Right, of course. Intros are the best. <laughs> um, so really quick before we do jump in to that, uh, just a couple of short, quick announcements. First of all, a huge thank you to our Patreon community. Uh, just... Thank you. Yeah, the it's been amazing for the last couple of years since we've been doing it. It's up to about 180 people, and it's been just a huge light in our life. Uh, if you're not familiar, we do monthly Q and A's. We do a men's group. We do a women's group. We have an ongoing me we chat, and it's just an awesome community that supports one another. If you're looking for a community, we would just say maybe check it out, see if it's for you. Uh, the de- the dates for the December calls are on our website and on um, Patreon. You can find out more information. So definitely check that out if you're looking for community. And we'd love to have you join us. Yes. And I just want to echo Finn and say a huge thank you to the entire community. We're incredibly grateful for each and every one of you. And again, go to our website, normalizingnominomy.com and click on the Patreon button. Also, if you're looking for a community, you can join our virtual meet and greets. And we have two of them this month. One is tonight. That's November 17th from 9 to 11 p.m. Eastern. And the next one is this Saturday, November 20th. 2021 from 9 to 11 p.m. Eastern. And both of these events are open to anyone that wants to join. Uh, We just ask that you are open-minded. Yeah, these have been awesome as well. We've been doing these since the beginning of COVID and they were a huge hit. People love them. So we're just going to keep doing them. And we're really excited about that. We're excited for these ones. We've got a bunch of people signed up already. And yeah, those are going to be awesome. If you've never joined one of these before, they're really great. We put everybody into a Zoom uh, giant room. We do some icebreakers. Then we do breakout rooms with questions to help people get to know each other. We scramble the rooms. We scramble the questions. And we just have a good time for like two hours. Yes. And then and then we're doing it again on Saturday. Yes. So, yes. And if you excited. happen to miss these events, don't worry. There'll be more in December. But please go sign up. Go to our website, normalizingnonmonogamy.com, and click on the meet and greet tab. On the community events tab. Oh, sorry. Emma, the meet and greet tab is no longer there. <laughs> yes, I know that. I know that. The, it's the virtual meet and greet under the community events tab. Where you'll also find information on our in-person meet and greets, which we're just going to shortly talk about uh, because we have all of the information up for our New Orleans one, which will be on February 7th. 2022. Uh, 2022. We're taking over an entire bar. It's going to be amazing. We're super duper excited about it. So you can sign up and find out more information there as 
as well as sign up for our mailing list if you want to stay up to date for when we announce the full details on our Albuquerque, Phoenix, Southern California, Northern California, and maybe Denver meet and greets. Yes. Coming up in the spring of 2022. Yep, we're working on the details for all of those. So sign up there if you want to keep up to date on that. And other than that, we want to jump into the interview. But if you would like to reach out to us, we would love to hear from you. Uh, feedback, comments, questions, anything you've got for us, head over to our website again, normalizingnonmonogamy.com, and click on the Contact Us page. Yes, under the About Us page. And also you can <laughs> you can find uh, podcast show notes under the podcast tab with pictures of our guests and links to everything you hear about in every episode. Yes. So with that, let's go jump into this awesome, awesome conversation with uh, Jenna and Wendy, and we will see you all on the other side. Let's go. Welcome to the show, Wendy and Jenna. We're really excited to talk with you and have you here and appreciate you, uh, I guess, spending this time with us and sharing your story. Yes. Thanks for having us on. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. We're really excited and and we'd love to get to know you both better. Do you mind introducing yourselves uh, for us, please? I'll go first. I don't mind. Um, my name's Jenna and uh, I'm pronouns. the poly one and my pronouns are she, her. Yeah. Uh, is there anything else? <laughs> That's it. <laughs> Whatever Any, you want to share. Anything you want to share. <laughs> John? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. It's I'm okay. Wendy. Um, uh, pronouns are she, her, and I am the, I identify as monogamous. Um, have all my life. <laughs> yeah. I've known Jenna since 2008. Um, we just celebrated our third wedding anniversary um, and five years of the, five years, five of, years of our first kiss yes oh wow. congratulations congratulations yeah thank you thank you <laughs> um i've always known she was Polly uh since we've been friends before we started dating so it's not like it was something totally new but yeah yeah, yeah. well we're, we're excited for that i know we kind of mentioned this early that that you two are the first monopoly couple that we've had on the show where both of you have shown up um, or both of you have come on the, the podcast. And <laughs> or we're one of the first. One of the first. Well, I yeah. can believe it is the first. So <laughs> just, just we're, <laughs> that. First we're, in a long time. <laughs> right. Yeah. There you go. So we're, we're really excited about that. And um, I think, yeah, like maybe going back to the beginning, like Jenna, maybe telling your side of it, like getting into polyamory and learning about that up to the point where you met Wendy. Yeah. So when I was at university, I had th these friends who were a couple who were poly and that's the first time I heard about it. And it sounded like, yeah, that's, that sounds great to me. <laughs> but at the time I was married and, um, my husband didn't feel that way and, um, didn't really feel like, he necessarily wanted me to be that way. It was difficult because when we first started dating at the time I identified as bisexual and I, at first he was like, well, that's okay if you're with women. But then, you know, later it was, it was like maybe not his favorite idea. So, so I didn't really do anything about it for a long time and just kind of, you know, just pushed it in the back of my head. And then uh, years later, um, I was in a relationship with a woman and, and I think it's, this was like maybe the, the worst way to start doing poly is like, we weren't having a great relationship time. <laughs> Let's open it up. No, like worst idea. Um, so we did, and, uh, that wasn't fantastic <laughs> for, I mean, for me it was, <laughs> but, uh, I, it helped me clarify what I wanted and what I didn't want. And so really then I feel like I didn't, like, I haven't had a lot of experience being actually, you know, like some people are bisexual, but they've never slept with someone of the same gender, right? Like. I was poly, but I hadn't really, I, I didn't feel like I had really <laughs> successfully uh, manifested that in my life. And then when, and I started dating and, um, at first I just, you know, I was out of a kind of a bad relationship and I, I just, 
I wouldn't have even dated anyone, but I had known her for so long. And so I felt comfortable dating her. So I was pretty shut down. And I kind of thought maybe at the time, like, well, maybe I'm not really poly. Maybe just in the past, I haven't been happy and fulfilled in my relationships. And I was looking for something else. Uh, but later I realized, no, that's just who I am. Like I, I like variety of experience. I, I like to have fun. Um, I think poly can be super fun. Yeah. So, and it, um, so then after we'd been together for a few, a few years, um, well, then also we've lived in places where there's not really anyone to date. Right. So like, it hasn't really been like something that was possible. We lived in a town of like 268 people for a while. (laughs) Yeah. um, That makes them a little hard. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. And they were all not people I would date every single one of them. (laughs) So, um, so I met someone and, you know, we were out about me being Polly, but anyway, I started dating someone and, um, yeah. And then I, I've dated two people since, since we've been together. Oh yeah. Three people. Sorry. <laughs> three people. We won't tell. We won't tell. Uh, yeah. And I think it's, it's very different from the time I tried it with a prior partner because, um, we are super solid and, and I'm so happy and fulfilled in our love life and our sex life. It's, it's not like, I mean, I do like variety of experience, but it's not like there's this one thing I'm missing that I need to go get elsewhere. Like a kink I have, that we don't share or something like that. Certainly I like to do other things, but none of them are necessarily like a need. They're more like, Oh yeah, sure. I'll try that. <laughs> so, um, so I feel like that was a really great way to, enter into being actively poly because, um, it was more about connecting. Yeah. And it wasn't, yeah. I think it can be a recipe for disaster if you're in a bad relationship and then you open it up. Like, no, that's not going to help anybody. So yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Without a doubt. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I think it's, I think it's amazing too, that like you had identified as polyamorous and you were interested in it, but you hadn't really done it. And the first opportunity you got to do it was while you're in a relationship with a monogamous person. I think that's mm-hmm. just kind of interesting. And, <laughs> and, and even from, from Wendy's side, like meeting somebody who's like, well, I'm polyamorous, but I've never really done it. I can see <laughs> maybe they're being like, okay, sure you are kind of like, <laughs> well, well, but I, again, I'm putting words in your mouth. I don't know. Like, what was it like when, when you first met Jenna and were approached like with this, information like how did you handle that and as you started dating um well like i said i'd always known jenna was poly um Mm -hmm. and just knowing jenna and how big she loves and how big her heart is i knew it was possible for her to love other people so the challenge for me came within my own internal makeup and and growing up and past childhood sort of things, you know, um, I've learned a lot about myself in this whole process and have become much more confident and (laughs) self-loving through it all. But, um, as far as when she wanted to start dating, it was kind of funny because, uh, well, Jenna had dated a, a, a past love for a little bit and, and, I struggled a lot with that, um, only because of some other things associated around that. But that is when I really discovered that I needed to work on self-love if I was going to be in this relationship with her, because anything that I was feeling, I recognized as totally my stuff. And it had nothing to do with anything she was doing. And, And we have had some times in the past where something comes up and we are very easy to communicate with each other. Never had a problem going, Hey, this is how I'm feeling. Let's talk about it. Sort of thing. I did have some kind of embarrassing moments when I look back on it now during that time, um, when I kind of blew up (laughs) and lost, lost my shit, so to speak. (laughs) Yeah, Was was a lot of that tied to the, the insecurity or the, the self 
the self love and and For I think sure. it's just I, I was just also gonna say like it's super self aware to recognize that like those things you're feeling are yours, not mm-hmm. hers, and that's Correct. a that's a yeah. really hard place to get to, and to get there that quick is pretty amazing. Agreed. Yeah. I, um, I listened to a lot of podcasts and had actually come across one that came at perfect timing. And it talked about this. It talked to an author of a self-published book called, um, love yourself like your life depended on it. I can't remember the name of the author right now, but I know that's the name of the book. And it really brought up a lot of self love issues for me. Like I, I needed to, look at myself in the mirror and look at myself in my own eyes and tell myself that I love myself. Like I love you. And so I I worked on a lot of those internal things and I'm still in the process of doing that. Um, it's, it's become easier now and I feel much more confident in things. Uh, I still do have insecurities, of course. I think it's just a natural human thing. Yeah. Um, but I recognize those as my own stuff and I, I hopefully don't ever project it onto her. No, she's great about that. Yeah. And I think it also helps that just having practiced Polly, she's seen that, oh, this hasn't taken away any of my love for her or affection or desire for her. I feel like consistently throughout our five years since we've kissed, like, our sex life has only gotten better <laughs> and, uh, and it keeps happening. So I, so I think that helped that there wasn't like some weird drop off in that, or I suddenly wasn't emotionally available to her or something like that. I think it also helps when has that, I mean, we both have, but, um, maybe it's the first time I've been in a relationship with someone who actually has also done a lot of work on themselves mm-hmm. and realizing you know, what your feelings are, identifying what your feelings are and maybe what's triggering that feeling. And it's, it's not always a blame thing. Like, I mean, I came out of a bad relationship before I was with her and there were things that would trigger me, but it wasn't about her. And I could recognize that. And I would say, Oh, this is what's happening for me. This has nothing to do with you, but I just want you to know, cause I know I seem weird or something. So mm-hmm. we're both really good about, about that kind of thing. Yeah. 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 That's, that's impressive because it's a skill to recognize it first and then to be able to communicate to your partner about like, Hey, this is what's going on. And it can, or at least this is what I think is going on. You could be wrong, (laughs) but, but that's, I mean, that's impressive that you're both able to do that or work your best to, to be able to do that. Right. Yeah. Um, Yeah. I think that's something that everyone strives for. Mm -hmm. Um, But yeah, thank you for, for sharing that. Yeah. Yeah. I was curious too. Um, I know, so I know that's a little bit of a different, we get a lot of emails that are like, I want to do this. My partner doesn't, can it work? And I know you didn't really have to bring it to Wendy, Jenna, like it was just, Mm -hmm. she knew and you started dating. And so like, it's a little bit different, but I'm curious, Wendy, on your end, had you like researched it, looked into it at all before been exposed to it. Yeah, well, yeah. been exposed to it, but even more so like the research process. Like yeah. you said, you listened to a lot of podcasts and you started going down the, the exploratory route. Had you done that before like the interest in Jenna came up? Um, I had read the ethical slut years ago. Okay. So I, I'd known about it. Um, and we're I think from I had Oregon, yeah, we're so from Portland, Oregon, so <laughs> lots of poly people. Okay. Yeah. So I, I'd known about poly. I'd never been in a relationship with a partner who had practiced poly before. So this is the first time I've really had to dig deep into myself. Right. Um, it, it, and yeah, I think that ever since she's been dating other people, I think I've I've explored it way more mm-hmm. um, for obvious reasons. <laughs> yeah. Read lots of books, listened to lots of podcasts, and um, yeah, yeah. And I think that's amazing. I think what I was maybe ultimately curious on is like I know people write in and say, "Well, what are some resources for my partner?" And I I feel like this is going to be projecting, but like as the partner who wants to be monogamous it can almost seem like, well, you're trying to convince me. Like if you just listen to enough podcasts or read enough of the books, 
you'll you'll learn that like this is the way to do it and that mm-hmm. you should change that to the way I want to do it. And I think seeing it more as like it's just about learning about it and you don't it's not to change your mind, but to just learn about it. And I was curious like maybe what were some of the resources you found the most useful, but also like how you just explaining that mentality of like it's not Jenna trying to change your mind and it's not you trying to necessarily change your mind. It's just the more you learned about it, maybe the more that it became easier to understand or to navigate. And I'm completely putting words in your mouth. I was just (laughs) kind of curious what your experience on that was. No. So um, I've read a lot of books. One of the, one of the major books I think that really helped a lot was a book called Polysecure. Mm-hmm. Um, it talks a lot about attachment styles. And honestly, even if you're not in a poly relationship, I highly recommend reading this book because it just relationships in general, you can learn so much from any of the poly resources out there. Um, but poly secure was one that I've gone back to many times. And in talking about the attachment styles within relationships, you know, the secure, the anxious, the avoidance, and another one I can't remember. Um, But yeah, that I would say would be one of the main resources. And then your podcast too. I just kind of fell into it when I was Google, Google searching things and listened to a bunch of podcasts. And it helped me to hear other poly people who were also like in a, I don't necessarily want to call it a primary relationship because of hierarchy stuff, but who had nesting partners, Mm -hmm. I guess. Um, So it was helpful for me to hear their experiences and coming back to the home and, you know, sharing things with their partner and how connected and how much closer you could be in that experience. And for me too, like watching her figure all of this out, because it's really been the the first time that she's been able to do it in, in a secure relationship, like she said, and watching her grow into that. And I keep telling her she, she glows and shines so brightly when she's super happy. And if that includes someone else too, then that's great. Like, awesome. I full, I think we fully support each other's growth and happiness. And that for me has been the major key in all of this. I feel like it also helps that we're queer. Mm -hmm. And so we're used to thinking of things as being just the way you are. Right. Mm -hmm. And I feel like I struggled for a while when I would see her struggling, I would feel guilty. Mm -hmm. And and like, well, if I just wasn't this way, she wouldn't be struggling and Mm -hmm. like, I'm being selfish or there's, you know, something wrong with me or, or whatever. And she, and she was amazing. And she would be like, no, (laughs) this is how you are. This is who you are. And there's nothing wrong with it. And, uh, yeah, it's true. I think expecting someone who's monogamous to be poly or someone who's poly to be monogamous is just as unfair as expecting someone who's straight to, to be gay or bisexual to be straight or whatever. So I think, um, maybe just having that, like, Grow, growing up being queer is has been really helpful in that because it hasn't been like it's not and, and also being from the west coast where it is more prevalent and so it's not like we're the only people we know who are, i mean here we are but um <laughs> but when we lived on the west coast definitely you know a lot of people i feel like at least within the queer community, over 50% poly, over 50% kinky. And, and then we come back east and I'm like, ooh, wow. <laughs> oh, I, thought, I thought I was like um, vanilla, not, like vanilla bean, like, you know. <laughs> but now I feel like I am full on like Rocky Road kinky and... <laughs> It's just, it just, uh, it just, I think things get a little more buttoned up, buttoned up as you move (laughs) east. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, you know, and maybe that's one of my gifts to the world is I help people (laughs) unbutton uh, themselves and think about things in a different perspective. Yeah. Coming from a, a monogamous background, when you think of all of the, the social programming that comes with monogamy, 
that you fall in love with this one person and you don't have eyes for anyone else. You're never attracted to someone else. Like that gets so programmed so deeply into our psyches and our souls. <laughs> yeah. It's so hard to break, but to be completely honest, like it's not, it's not a human trait to not be attracted to someone else <laughs> just because you're in love with the person that you're with. Like, there is attraction there. And I, I think that in this process that has helped me see that for myself, because I've always like completely shut it off. If I'm with someone, nope, not even looking like, right. and honestly, I'm so in love with her that that's kind of the, the way it is for me. But at the same time, I could look at someone and objectively go, Oh, I'm attracted to them. But for me, monogamy means I don't really choose to put that energy into something else. Like I'm very introverted. So when she does go away to visit her, her, um, other loves, then I am happy with a house to myself and the dog. And we go out and have hikes and I go and visit friends or, just hang out and do home projects. Like lots of home thing. projects. It's really great. I come home. <laughs> last time I came home and she built this whole shoe closet because I had a lot of shoes. I did. So that's a bonus. <laughs> yeah, that's that's a bonus, right? Like Wendy gets to do a fun project that she wants to do, and you get to benefit from. Hey, I come home yeah, and this new, new thing is done. It's a win-win for me. I'm telling you what. Like I've got it good here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's amazing. And I, I love that you touched on like what, you know, what is how you handle those situations when, when Jenna goes with other people and like mm -hmm. what, what fills you up and finding that and recognizing that I think is, is huge. Cause it helps for me, at least it helps if I'm doing something that I know fills my cup. And for me personally, it helps me work through those insecurities more. So rather than just like, if, if sitting on the couch and, you know, like if that, and not, not, not yeah. doing, not getting out and doing something that I know I want to do. Mm -hmm. Well, also I feel like once we're in serious relationships, we, as people, everything, because especially I think as lesbians, um, when I used to date, uh, mostly men, you'd have girls night, you'd have girls weekend, you'd have time with your girlfriends. Right. Mm -hmm. And when everyone's a girl, then, you know, <laughs> then it's hard. So I started doing like, even before I was actively being poly, I would have minus one weekend. And so, you know, our, like a couple of straight friends weren't shafted in that they couldn't bring their partners, but we all could, you know, it's like just one person gets to come because it's nice to also be your individual self in the world. And, um, you know, uh, I think that's something, I mean, it's hard because we like each other so much. We do. we do everything together, but it's also good for me because she is also like such a caretaker to me in so many ways that it's nice for me to go out and be like, Oh yeah, I can do all this stuff myself. <laughs> I can like lift my own suitcase into the overhead bin. <laughs> Actually, I almost dropped it on a guy's head, but <laughs> that's like an example. But there are many things <laughs> I can do for myself. <laughs> <laughs> well, plus, meanwhile, she's at home building an addition on the back of the house. So yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Bonus. <Honest. Yeah. laughs> so. To your point, it does kind of try, try to undo or maybe not undo, but recognize that there's codependencies there. That, yeah. that Well, and it's so easy when you get along with somebody so well yeah. to spend all of your time with them. And <laughs> you almost have to force yourself to be like, okay you need to go away for the weekend. I need to go away for the weekend and like, we'll see each other in a couple of days. It'll be okay. Like yeah. that's we, something we run into because we <laughs> yeah. like to spend a lot of time together too. Yeah. Well, and then we just think like, also it's nice to have someone to miss. Right. Mm -hmm. And so even though you're missing someone, it's kind of nice to have that missing feeling and then come back together because it's very exciting then too. Right. Like, Oh, I haven't seen you for four days or something. And then, and then it's on. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it brings it brings back some of that like fun and excitement yeah. in some in a different way. Yeah, definitely. definitely. And it makes us uh, this whole process has made us much closer because we've had to be so open with each other and vulnerable at times. Um and and having that time apart really helps you realize like what you have sometimes and and 
makes it feel stronger Mm -hmm. when she does come back. Like I, I make it a big deal when she does come home. Like we have a chalkboard right inside our front door and I always write like, welcome home. We miss you so much. You know, Charlie and I, the dog. (laughs) (laughs) Well, when I leave, like, um, she'll always put a card in my suitcase and I'll leave notes for her and cards for her. And one time I left her a card for every single day I was going to be gone with the days on them for her to open, um, just to help remind her that like, yeah, you know, they're super helpful too. Cause I do have those times when I'm struggling and then I'll just pick up a card and read it and, and I'm back to being good. Um, and then there's sometimes I even text her, Hey, I'm feeling a little insecure. Can you just like shoot me a message? <laughs> you know, like, I love you. I miss you. Something, anything. Um, and she's really good about it. Like she'll send me little voice memos and that helps tremendously to even hear her voice. So, yeah. well, and I like to take her phone and, and take sexy pictures before <laughs> I leave. So then she has those to look at while I'm gone. Yes. So <laughs> that's been helpful. I think you said. Yes. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Those are awesome strategies. Yeah. And I love to right? the, the idea to ask for it. Right. And I think it's easy it's so easy to slip into the mindset of, well, if she loved me enough, she would send this without me having to ask. And oh, it's and like, I have felt that. yes, I have felt that. <laughs> but to, to be able to overcome it and in the moment be like, look, I just need to hear this or that or the other thing. And I know it might sound needy or stupid, but like, please. And once you get it, you're like, okay, good. I'm good. Yeah. Yeah. And I think even the last time I did that, I was like, I'm a little embarrassed to say this, but I'm feeling a little insecure you know, and she's never, I've never felt shame around it. I've never felt, um, like I was being stupid or, but she's also never passive aggressive about it either. And so that's helpful because I am really allergic to passive aggressive, (laughs) like horribly. So, so she's never been that way. And, And that's one of the great things is that even when she's communicated her struggles with me, she, she is really good about, never putting it on me or this is something I'm doing to her or making her feel or something like that. Um, so that's, that's been really helpful. I feel like we're really lucky. (laughs) Yeah. We're really good at communicating with each other in that respect for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Have you, this is just a random suggestion and thought, have you two ever heard of the or the app Marco Polo? Yeah. You know what? We haven't done that. We should, we should do that. Yeah. She does it with some other people, but I well, often like if I go away for the weekend with someone and it's not work time, then to me, that feels like I'm on a date. And so I'm not really on my phone with anyone the whole time. Right. Because I'm really, I really hate it when I'm on a date and someone's on their phone and we're really purposeful. Even like after work, we just put our phones away and just focus on each other. Yeah. So so it's hard, but then more recently I've been seeing someone and, and I've gone because, you know, I've been there like during the work weekend and, and I work remotely. So I've worked remotely from there. And so it's so easy for me when, you know, the person I'm dating is at work and I am there. It's not like I'm being rude and like, Oh, let me just go send this sexy <laughs> Marco Polo to my wife <laughs> or voice memo. Oh, yeah. Right. It's kind of the reverse of what I have when, like when we're together and I'm dating someone it's frequently during the work day that I'm doing most of the messaging and stuff. And then maybe like once a week we'll do like video chat or, or something like that. So it's just, you know, reversed when, when I'm gone. So, yeah. And we, we have purposeful weekends where we go away and don't look at our phones. Um, like, like she said in the beginning, we just got back from Turks and Caicos and, um, yeah, it's international, but we could have been on our phones, but didn't, yeah, that was, I didn't want to spend the money, but <laughs> <laughs> Wi-Fi. we had Wi-Fi too. So, you know, but it, was, of... but it was our anniversary trip and I felt like it was very important for us to just be together. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. There's, there's some major, I guess it is powerful to, to be, um, intentional about that time together. Uh, yeah. something that we've, we've worked on too, uh, it's yeah. It's just something about not having that distraction. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Um, yeah. It sounds like you had a question, and so it was. No, I did. I was curious, and I don't want this to come across like a drug dealer trying to get you to try a new drug. 
uh, Wendy, <laughs> but like, and maybe for the both of you, like, have you, Wendy, thought about like, or have you given it the old college try? Like, curious about experiencing non-monogamy. It sounds like you're almost open to it, but you're just, you're fairly introverted and it's just not something that's like there time-wise. But also on the flip side, Jenna, like if, if Wendy were to go out and explore, would that be something you are open to as well? No, <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, absolutely. Like, yeah, I'm not a hypocrite. I think it would be an adjustment, you know, because I haven't had to deal with that, but obviously, yeah, I mean, I would support that and, um, you know, and we'd work through it. And yeah. I haven't, I haven't given it the whole college try. No. Um, I, I can't say that there has been anyone that has interests me enough to want to take time away from mm-hmm. us. I can't say that would ever happen, but <laughs> because I'm so focused on and, and I so enjoy spending time with Jenna and I just want every single moment that I can possibly get with her. Um, I'm a lot of fun. She is a lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs> she keeps me fun and I keep her safe. So. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, I, I think that it would be possible for me to love someone else. Um, I just, like I said, I, I, I don't, I don't have the desire to put that energy somewhere in, sure. into another relationship. You know, like, I feel like I finally found my perfect person and I, I just want to hang out here. <laughs> kind of a bandwidth thing right like i think we have different bandwidths for for that and um i definitely don't feel like i have a bandwidth to add another person into my mix you Mm -hmm. know um i'm i'm perfectly happy with friends and family and and just being i mean she was like not dating before we started dating yeah, she'd taken really. some years off and was kind of in the mode of um Never i'm gonna just gonna get again. a tiny house and have a dog <laughs> yeah, and pretty much live off the <laughs> land kind of thing and yep. so i think it was you know uh, like maybe a little bit of a leap for her to date me mm-hmm. although it wasn't because we'd known each other for so long and that's the only yeah. way it could happen so i feel like if when was going to do that like she's just wired differently than mm-hmm. me. And so, um, yeah. And I'm sure I would be insecure at first and, you know, I wouldn't want the other person to be as pretty as me and I would still want to be the best at sex and all, you know, <laughs> like her favorite and all of that, but I would absolutely. And then I would maybe read all the books that I've bought. Right. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, because I would definitely figure it out for sure. And we, we have like, we tried, you know, being with another person together, not in a relationship necessarily, but someone I was in a relationship with and like, and we've been completely ruled out that that would never happen again. Like having sexual encounters with someone else together. But I feel like the relationship part of it is something that it's a lot of, that's a lot of energy to pour into mm-hmm. that. I I'm just not interested in, in doing. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. And I think too, like it could be you two maybe have exactly the same amount of quantity of time, but the mm-hmm. bandwidth to do the other things is different. And I think that's just something mm-hmm. that's important to highlight and I appreciate it. And yeah. thank you. Yeah. Yeah. And I think it's, a, it's also okay that like, I mean, not everybody's, the same. And that's yeah. part of it is, and like some people are just monogamous and like, mm-hmm. and that's fine too. Like, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, it was really interesting to me when I did start doing a lot of research around this to find so many poly pages and uh, resources that talked so badly about monogamy being so toxic. And I, I just kept, I kept trying to find resources that said monogamy is, is okay you know, if that's how you identify, that's great. But this is also another way to identify. Um, and thankfully, finally found resources around that. Poly Secure was one of them. Um, yeah. yeah. And and your guys' podcast, too, has been tremendously helpful, too, around well, that. thank you. And we don't have a problem with your monogamy. Well, thank <laughs> No, no. It's, we very much believe that you can, whatever works for you. Like that's, Yeah. 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 Well, I mean, we'll always wear a mask around you, even after the pandemic. <laughs> I don't want to catch it. 
but we're okay. We're okay with you having it. You know what? It's not contagious. <laughs> I've been out for 13 years now, and I haven't caught it. No, so. I haven't. I might have for a minute, but no. Perfect. Well, that's good to know. Um, I was going to say you're going to be wearing a mask around a lot of people. I know. Yeah. Right? Now, yeah. I think most people, like, if they had the skills, I think more people are poly than not. You know, yeah. Just like I think more people are not straight. You know, mm-hmm. I think everybody's a little bit queer, right? But um, but so many people are programmed to not recognize that or not accept it or not explore it or you know mm-hmm. all the things. So yeah, but there are about. some people who just are actually completely straight or completely monogamous. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, for sure, for sure. And and you mentioned earlier a bit about you wanted to avoid the word primary partner. Um, and then you mentioned a little bit about hierarchy. How, how do you two approach hierarchy? I think that's something we're still working out. Um, yeah. yeah. So, so I've dated a, 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 a few people, but have maybe two, two serious relationships since we've been together. And one of the people already had, like a primary partner. Um, and so that was really easy because there was like no pressure or expectation when there was no conversation about it. And then the, the most recent person had been dating somebody, but identified as solo poly. And then, and then that relationship ended. And then, and then I was the only person that she was dating. And, and that's like, I am just, naturally against hierarchy and just because (laughs) I don't know, like I'm just a socialist (laughs) and I don't, I don't like it, but, but I'm also realizing, but that's actually a thing. And so not that someone is more important to me or that I can't love someone very deeply, but when I, I think where is the majority of my time going to be, who am I going to spend my holidays with, you know, that kind of thing. Like, I think going forward, it's, it's going to be important for me to figure out a way of talking about that without using words that like maybe don't feel amazing to me. Right. I think when people hear primary partner or, or hierarchy, they feel like then they're less important. Yeah. They're less important. And that doesn't mean they're less important. It means this is the structure of my life. and. And yeah, I mean, it's just the way it is. So, yeah. She's been really good too about telling people like how much in love and how solid we are Mm -hmm. um, and, and make sure that they know that like, this is not going to end no matter. Yeah. Also because there's some dynamics because we're a butch femme couple Mm. and traditionally, I don't know. I feel like it can be more like sexist or misogynistic than straight couples. I mean, definitely like, I feel like people can fall into these stereotypical roles and, um, and because, um, it seems like femme people don't date other femme people. The other people I've dated have been masculine of center. And so that can be like this weird, like you don't want it to be this weird, like, you know, dick measuring contest. Right. (laughs) (laughs) And, And it's really important for me when I date someone else who is also a butch, you know, who is a butch lesbian, like Wendy is that they understand that like, you're not like, She's not First of all, us. yeah, I'm not comparing you. I don't want like a dick measuring contest. This is not a competition. Mm-hmm. You need to completely respect my wife and, and our relationship and the, and the love that we have. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, yeah. Yeah. Cause at the same time, I also respect her relationships outside of us in the sense that, um, like we were talking when she went away this last time, it was for a longer period of time than we have ever have ever experienced before. So I was struggling with it. And, um, she said, well, just pretend I'm going away for work. And I said, I don't really want to disrespect your relationship like that. That's, that's not, I don't want to trick my mind and I don't want to 
I don't want to think that you're not like going away and being your full self and, and loving somebody and having a good time. And, um, so for me, that's, that was part of that, not disrespecting the relationship in that term. So, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think she's also a really secure, uh, butch lesbian. And so that's helpful. I know other, (laughs) I know other butch fam couples that are poly, but like there's weird rules. Like the femme person can date other people, but not other butch people, which seems like we don't really have those sort of boundaries. I mean, I could date any, you know, I could date a man if I wanted to. I mean, I, you know, there's a, 2% 2% chance that could happen. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, <laughs> no. <laughs> I like that 2% chance. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> Definitely. One, one thing that you'd also mentioned earlier uh, was around fe- like feeling guilty. And I imagine, I don't know, that's something that's really, I think common um, among all types of relationships, but for both of you, I wonder if you could just talk a little bit about that, how you've worked through that and process that, because it can be really difficult to let go of. Yeah. It's, it can also be, it could also make it hard to talk about things. Um, because I, I have felt a sense of guilt too, when I'm struggling and I can tell that she's feeling guilty about it. Like the next time around, if I'm struggling again, I might keep it a little more inward and not talk about it. But then I have to remind myself, but wait a minute, she's my partner. <laughs> I can talk about this. I can let her have her own feelings and work those feelings out too. So it has been, yeah, a little tricky to navigate, but go ahead. Yeah. Well, and then, I mean, I've also, you know, like I'll come home and sh- she wants to hear about it. I'm like, but really like, how much do you want to hear about it? <laughs> um <laughs> Uh, and, and so that's been hard for me to like come home and, or feel okay about being excited and happy around her and stuff. But I mean, it's really working itself out cause she's been great. And she's like, no, I want to know. I'm like, okay. And then, you know, I wait like a day or two and, until I talk to her, um, about it and, um, just give you a little time to sit with it and process and yeah. And, and yeah. And I, I generally don't ask right away. I, I might ask, did you have a fun time? You know, just mm-hmm. a, a yes or no question. And then later on, well, tell me about, you know, what's going on. How, how, what did you do? You know, that sort of thing. Yeah. She's really good about, and I am really good about respecting her privacy. She doesn't have to tell me everything. She can have her own private moments um, with yeah. other people. And that's, that was something that I actually struggled with in the beginning because we really tell each other everything. Um, but I, I really reformulated that in my brain into, uh, this is respecting her relationship with someone else and they have their own private things and mm-hmm. that's okay. It doesn't like affect me. <laughs> it doesn't take her away from me. It just means she has something else and that's okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and I, I mean, I definitely, I'm a, I'm a guilt prone person, generally speaking. So, um, it, it's been a, it's been a struggle for me for sure. And also because, because we are so happy and I feel like I have, I have friends who are like, well, Wendy's so great. Like, how could you do this to her? Honestly. And, and, um, and that's kind of shitty, right? Yeah. That's yeah. a shitty way to feel. I'm like, right. How could I do this to her? Because I love her. And of course I don't want, you know, but and really, she's helped me with that more than anything else is her just reminding me, this is the way you are. This is who you are. There's nothing wrong with who you are. Okay. Like, it's beautiful that this is the way you are and who you are. And, and this whole process has been such uh, a, a huge period of self growth for me. When somebody says that or thinks that, I think to myself, yeah, how could she, like, help me grow as a person? <laughs> well, I also, like, yeah, I also feel like it just makes it thing. seem it's like thing. poor Wendy. Yeah. No. Jenna's just, you know. Doing her thing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, I don't care about her feelings or something. And Not true at and all. And that's, yeah, I feel it's like it's brought us closer. Opposite, actually. Yeah. 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 Well, and I think that's 
I don't know if you two listen to Dan Savage at all, but his term for poly under duress, right? Like Jenna, you said, well, we can be together, Wendy, but this is how it's going to be. And you get, you know, and it doesn't sound like that at all. It's been very collaborative, very much like this is you. I want you to be you. And I think that's not that there's, I mean, I don't know. I don't want to get into the poly under <laughs> duress ethics because we're not qualified on that one, but um, it doesn't sound like that's what's happening here. It's very, very co, I don't know, just collaborative. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, very much sure. so. Yeah. Um, and I think that that's because we have such a solid foundation, um, not just a friendship, but like we deeply love each other. And we're super in like with each other yeah. and that's helpful too. Right. So, yeah, we've definitely heard that uh, or met people along the way who are like, well, we love each other, but we don't really like each other. And there's days, there's <laughs> days that we don't always like each other, but we're, I think for moments, for moments, <laughs> yeah. portions of days. Um, but no, I think that's huge that, that it's a friendship with all of these layers built on that foundation is, is awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think, I mean, just as much as Wendy's learned a lot about herself through it, I've learned a lot about myself and, and I've, I'm getting better at setting boundaries and, you know, a lot of the things that you, you know, you just, you can't, I mean, you can know about them intellectually, but until you have to put them into practice and, you know, just dealing with other people and other, kinds of relationships. I mean, it's also given me the opportunity to date people who I wouldn't necessarily want to ever marry or live with, but that doesn't mean I can't have like a fantastic relationship with them. And it doesn't mean we don't have love to share and give to each other. So, I mean, I've learned a lot about that and, and there's not that pressure, right? I, I feel like for sure with lesbians, like when you date, it's like third date is the U-Haul, right? <laughs> and you're going to move in together and get a bunch of cats and date. knits and yeah. Uh, that was it the second date? Yeah. So, uh, Wendy, Wendy, she takes things a little slower. Jenna does. She's a third, I do, I do. she's a third date U-Haul kind of girl. Exactly. No. And I, and I also like, I take things slow. Like I don't like, I'm super, for casual sex. It's just never worked for me. And I try it every few years. And every time I'm like, nope, still don't like it. <laughs> so, so yeah, I think it just remind you know, just, but getting to figure out other things that I like and don't like, and yes, yeah, it's, it's been, it's been fun for me and challenging and, mm-hmm. um, for both of us exhilarating and (laughs) heartbreaking and, you know, all the things that come with relationships. Yeah. Yeah, Right. Yeah. Um, how open, it sounds like you both are pretty open. How open are you with your friends and family and how has that journey gone, I guess, around (laughs) non-monogamy? It's hard. I feel like it's way harder to be open as poly than it is to be open as queer. Because I think people have finally come around to, like, it shocks me when anyone has a problem with anyone being queer now. I'm just floored. Like, I don't get it. But I'm never surprised when people don't understand Polly. I told, so the prior relationship when I had tried Polly, I told my mom, and she said, Jennifer, are you on drugs? <laughs> and she was really worried about me. I mean, because, you know, when I was 18, I did, I did have a brief drug problem. And so I, you know, and then here it is like 20, you know, 20 years later, and she's worried I'm back on drugs. <laughs> and, um, so uh, we're still, and, and so we were going to come out to my mom, uh, but then the relationship I was in ended. And so I thought, okay, well, dodge that bullet. <laughs> and so um, but my mom's getting older and my dad passed and my mom might come to live with us. And if she does, obviously I'm not going to lie and say, I'm just going away for work, you know? Um, so we'd, you know, I think we're waiting to cross that bridge. I think, I think a personal conversation um, when all three of us are in the same room, 
Is because the whole, better. because it's not both of us, yeah. I feel like that's very important. So people can see like, look, she's actually okay with it. Right. It's not just one of my wild ideas. Right. And because I am a person who gets wild <laughs> ideas and follows those ideas. And I, I like to, you know, on many adventures. Yes. I'm very, <laughs> but it's not like just something I'm dragging her no. through or something like that. So I think, you know, eventually we'll have that conversation with my mom. We're definitely, I'm definitely not, I feel like I'm out to pretty much most of my friends. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. But I have two separate Instagram pages, you know, and one is, um, where my mom is on and, and, uh, and clients (laughs) and, you know, coworkers and, and things like that, um, where I don't share as much. And the other one, I get to share all sorts of sexy pics of myself and talk about my lovers and our kink life, which is a whole different, you know, Mm -hmm. part of our dynamic, which we also don't share with my mom. (laughs) (laughs) I wonder why. (laughs) Um, yeah. So she, you know, if she moves in, like we're going to build out our attic into a master suite and I'm talking to some neighbors about soundproofing. And I'm like, so how would we soundproof that? Because I don't want to have silent sex and I don't want to worry about her hearing things and wondering what, what is, is that noise. Yeah. So yeah, you got to get the tiny home and put it in the backyard for her. Yeah. yeah. Sound yeah. soundproof the tiny home. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's a perfect idea. <laughs> yeah, but my son, my son knows um he, my son is an adult and um his dad is also part of our family and yeah. he knows. Yeah. Uh, my son knows, my son is an adult as well. Um my birth mother knows. I have kind of a complicated I was adopted so I have adoptive parents and birth parents and but my birth mother knows and uh and I have uh, another friend in, in Texas who knows. Um, but yeah, I'm pretty open about it. Yeah. She but... will post things. Cause she also has two Instagram. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, the public one, she'll post like repost things on her story, supportive of Polly and stuff. I feel yeah. like if anyone's reading between the lines, you know, they yeah. could figure it out. But, right. Um, and I did, I did think, I think I did actually say something on Facebook. It was Valentine's day and there was something going around where people were posting, how did you meet and all the cute things about their relationship. And I posted two of them, one for each of my relationships at the time, but I, you know, I selected the people I didn't want to see that. And those were, you know, clients, my mom, old Republican relatives, (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> otherwise, otherwise, like I am making a purposeful effort to be out about it because it shouldn't be something that's like, it should be something that people realize is an option and, and a way that some people do things and not everyone does things the same way. And that's totally fine. And also you don't have to under, like other people don't have to understand it. They just have to accept it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They don't have to even do it. I mean, how yeah. you're married to somebody and she's not doing it. So like, yeah, they don't. <laughs> Exactly. Yeah. 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 I, I consider myself monogamous with an open mind. And I yeah. think that, that, I think that that is really, um, something because I think a lot of monogamous people are not open-minded like that. But I also think that poly people frequently feel like they're automatically like more enlightened. And that is not true yeah, no. at all. <laughs> um, uh, we agree. So many poly people <laughs> who are not. Yeah. 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 That's for sure. That yes, is for sure. I was curious, unless Emma, you have another question. Mm-mm. No, I right know. <laughs> I was curious. You, you both talked a little bit about ways that you felt you've each grown. And I was curious, maybe what you think the other person, like the way Jenna, like how have you seen Wendy grow? And Wendy, how have you seen Jenna grow? Like maybe one or two of like the major ways you've, you've seen each other grow or evolve over the last couple of years? Well, for, for me, just noticing Jenna's growth, um, like she had said that she's learning to create boundaries for herself and how to say no and what she wants to talk about and what she doesn't want to talk about. And, um, and, and being okay with that, like that's, that's something major for her. Like when she said she's kind of guilt driven, she doesn't want to feel guilty about things um, and, and have to talk about stuff that she doesn't want to talk about. And she's just becoming stronger as a person 
and, and more vibrant, which is, you know, an an amazing thing to see. So sweet. (laughs) (laughs) Um, I mean, I've definitely, uh, I've definitely seen, uh, Wendy just maybe, I don't want to, let me just think about how to say that. I don't want to imply that she's not an independent whole person, but I think, you know, when you fall in love with someone and you're deeply in love, it's easy to just throw your whole self into that. And, and we definitely did that, you know, when, when we first uh, fell in love and, and I think it's been great to see her like just become a more independent person while within the relationship, right? It's easy to be an independent, self-confident person when you're single and you're working on all that and right. And like self-love, but people don't think about that as much when they're in relationships because I don't know, like they just don't, um, because you're getting a lot of love from the other person too. And, and I haven't taken love away, but just seeing her work through that and, um, become more okay. Like, I mean, she shares with me when she, when she's struggling in a really great non-passive aggressive way, but that's become less and less. I mean, her struggles have been less and less because, because she's more practiced at it and because she's done so much work on herself and just seeing that, um, is pretty, is pretty great. Thanks. Thanks. Yeah. I definitely struggled with, um, the, the whole idea of throwing yourself into a relationship when you're first, first falling in love, we spent like the first four years almost constantly together because we just like each other so much. Well, we both work at home. And and yeah. And yeah. And we both work at home. So, and we've done everything together. And, um, when she started going away, even just for a day, I remember in the very beginning sitting there thinking, what do I do with myself? Like, <laughs> what do I do now? Yeah. And now and, she builds shoe closets. And I was <laughs> super, <laughs> I was super surprised that I had that feeling too, because I would remember when I was single before we started dating, like I had all kinds of stuff that I was doing. I was walking to the library and reading all kinds of books. I was going to the gym all the time. I just wander around and take pictures or, just go have lunch with friends or whatever. Um, so it was really kind of shocking to me that I was back in that place that felt like I was not necessarily losing myself, but I had completely thrown myself into our relationship and that was okay. But it was also okay for me to go, okay, I'm also an individual person who has other things to do. Well, and I've seen her also do you think, you know, since, I mean, it's hard because of COVID, Mm. but I've seen her, like she's gone and done something with a friend when I am home now, you know, Mm. outside and (laughs) and all of that. But, um, just doing that, you know, is like, I'm, I'm, like, I think good for you. You know, mm. I'm a really, like, I'm a really independent person. So it's never, it's never really been a struggle for me to just do whatever I want to do. <laughs> <laughs> but seeing her do it is great. I'm like, yeah. yes. Right. Because also when I see her do that, it reinforces to me that it's okay for me to be my own person too, because she's practicing what she's saying. She's not just being kind because she loves me and saying it's okay and to be an individual person. In the background. Yeah. Yeah. No. <laughs> yeah. Not at all. So yeah. it's been nice. And, and it makes her hotter. <laughs> Thank you. I mean, I was already hot for her, but it's, I'm telling you, it keeps getting better. That's amazing. I love it. Yeah, and I, I think to your point, though, like the, the the I was just thinking about it, and maybe a way that uh, maybe I think about it is like when you jump into that new relationship or or into a relationship, it's easy to, at least for me, to give like a hundred percent. Mm-hmm. Give a hundred percent, but then the problem is you expect to get a hundred percent back. And, right. and then it's a, then it's a net, a net zero, right? Like I gave a hundred, but I got a hundred. Mm-hmm. And if you give a hundred and they give you back 80, you're like, Oh, yeah. there's a, there's something missing here. And that's you not taking any for yourself. 
And I think that's really easy to do for certain types of people. Mm -hmm. I'm that type of person that will give everything I have. And then when I don't get it back, I'm like, Hey, what the hell? And I almost get offended by it. And then I'm like, well, that's not their responsibility. Like I need to also take care of me. That's not their responsibility to take care of me, but it's, it's easy to do because you get so excited and you're like, ah, I want to give you everything I have. And then yes. you're like, well, I don't have anything left. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, and I think recognizing I can still give her a, like, I still love her with my whole heart. Exactly. I'm not giving her a hundred percent of my time and attention. Yeah. Right. Exactly. It's not a la- It's not, you have to give them, it's not, you're not giving them all of the love you have. It's, you are just taking care of yourself and maybe that's just some time. Right. Yeah. It's not, mm-hmm. it's not a yeah. lack of love. You don't love her less because you go away for a week or a weekend or she goes out to dinner without you. Like, right. yeah, yeah. And I think it's something that even if I'm, even if I'm not seeing someone else that I want to make more, like I want to do things like have girls night or, you know, just do stuff like that. And it's been hard because we moved away from all of our family and friends and then COVID happened. Mm-hmm. And, and I don't have like, a lot of super close friends like I do on the West coast, but like thinking about investing in those kind of relationships too, because I think that we get wrapped up in like only investing in relationships that involve sex, but a friendship is a relationship just as much and, and sometimes more intense and deeper than a relationship that you might have with someone that you're shagging. So, (laughs) you know, just investing in other relationships and other things outside of, and, maintaining your full self that you bring into the relationship is I think also helps keep it alive. Right. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah without, a so. doubt. without a doubt. So. Um, I had a fun question. All right. I, question. I love fun questions. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you listen to the show, you know that we often ask about bloopers <laughs> and, <laughs> and we're curious if you two have anything that you'd like to share that can be a blooper around sex or relationships or and like anything just or just a life blooper a yeah. life blooper <laughs> so, i haven't listened to your show yet <laughs> i just Basic, said it to her the other she day, just sorry. sent it to me and it's been a crazy like work been a crazy week. Week. you don't need to you don't I'm need so to i'm so offended yeah you don't need to uh, <laughs> don't explain why <laughs> there's zero judgment here well, i do want to hold on before we go into this question i do want to highlight something that was said earlier that i think is really funny which is the monogamous with an open-minded one has listened to all the podcasts, read all the books and done everything. <laughs> and Jenna was like, well, maybe if Wendy started dating somebody, I'd read all the books I bought. <laughs> <laughs> well, true. No. And I remember in a prior relationship going to couples therapy and the therapist was also queer and Polly and me saying something, you know, that I realized, she's like, how did you realize that? I'm like, well, it just seemed like what, what you do. Yeah. What, how it should be. And she's like, wow, like a lot of people read books and go to therapy and it's really hard for them to get it. So I think I might be a natural. <laughs> a few steps ahead of where I was. So, oh yeah. And, and humble about it. I love that. Yes. Part. <laughs> no, there's still plenty I can learn. Definitely. Yes. I just right. have a slight advantage. Yeah. Fair enough. Well, yeah. The blooper question is sort of just, And it doesn't have to be sex or even relationship related. Often it is just to sort of highlight that like it doesn't go perfect and that we all make mistakes and we can laugh at them and move on. We're all human. And we're all human. But it is not a requirement to be on the show. No. (laughs) (laughs) I'm I'm trying to think of. And we can skip this question if you can't. can If I think of one, uh, like my brain will still keep working on it, even when I'm thinking about other things. So she'll come back. It'll be 10 o'clock at night. I'll be like, damn it. (laughs) (laughs) That's our blooper. That's what happens. Well, I can't really think of anything. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the good news is you can always leave us a voicemail and we'll, (laughs) we'll just stick it in the outro. There you and go. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Make it. perfect. <laughs> is there anything else that either of you would like to share? I, we've been through a lot and we this, it's been amazing talking to both of you. Thank you. No, I don't, I don't think of, I can't think of anything else. Um, yeah. I just really appreciate that you guys were open to have us both on. Mm-hmm. Um, Cause it's like I said, as the monogamous person in a poly relationship, it's really hard to find resources and people talking about it. 
Well, and a lot of the resources she's found have been a lot of people just complaining, <laughs> Yeah, you know, and yeah. being really negative and yeah. like, like, where are the examples of success, yeah. you know? And I, I find too, more than when I come out more on Instagram, on, on the more private page, I'm actually getting messages from people going, Hey, I'm also monogamous. And I started dating this poly person. Like, how do you deal with this? And, and yeah. it's, it's been interesting for me to, to put that out there and to try and help people along in their process as well. So. Well, and I got a message from somebody else who's also a femme <laughs> say, asking me like how I navigate dating to butch people. <laughs> um, and, uh, and so I haven't, I haven't gotten back to her yet because I want to give her a really thoughtful response because there's so much that goes into that. Not only like mono poly, but like butch femme dynamics and, you know, Keep and I dynamics. think, yeah, yeah, all of that. I think one thing that, um, I think when I tried poly before in a prior relationship, um, my partner had a, a lot of rules about things and, and it just, I do not like rules. <laughs> um, and if you tell me I can't do something, that's exactly what I want to do. Um, but I think it's easy to fall into that. Like, well, here's all the rules that will help this work for me. And I think, um, I think it's important to have boundaries, but rules are like, you can't do this activity with this person and, and, and things like that it just causes resentment. And we don't, we don't like, she doesn't do that to me. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. except, you know, like you can't watch our show with someone else because <laughs> this is the show we're watching right now. This is our time. Like we're not going to cheat on each other with Netflix, <laughs> but sex is fine. Just exactly. don't watch our damn show. Don't right. watch our show. Yeah. 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 But there's like reading a book together. Yeah. You know? it's like <laughs> but there's very few other boundaries we put on as far as like what specific sexual activities we can do with other people and, and that because, because I think she also knows me and she knows as soon as she says that, that's what I'm going to want to do. <laughs> <laughs> Even if I don't really want to do it, it'll take like I'll have to do it before I figure it out. So, yeah. but I think it's good to just kind of like I, I feel like we both come at it in that we assume best intent, mm -hmm. right? And if I am with someone and I do something that in any way feels like it's going to be a threat to our relationship or undermine our relationship. I stop or, or, you know, if I could figure out ahead of time, then I don't do it. But if it's something I do and I figure out later, like, Ooh, that doesn't feel like it's going to be a good thing for my marriage. Like I'm, I'm just not going to do that because it's because our relationship is so important to me. Um, and, um, uh, maintaining that, um, like it's, I mean, she's the, She's like, besides my son, she's the best thing that's ever happened to me. So <laughs> I, I definitely don't want to fuck that up, um, for myself or for us. So. And that, that has really actually been a huge part of how I've navigated through this is reminding myself of that constantly, that this relationship in this marriage to her is something that she doesn't want ending <laughs> and, and remembering that, like I even wrote it down in my journal. When I have hard times, I have this page that I go back to and I read and I always like the very first thing is always assume best intent. Mm -hmm. That's what we do with each other. And that's, that has led me back to a more sane, less in my head, mm -hmm. <laughs> making up scenarios of what's happening while she's gone or talking to somebody, you know what I mean? Like, yeah it's really brought me back to the present and focusing on what we have. So yeah, very important. Yeah, for sure. Well, and I think to the point of, you said you don't like rules and people are like, Oh shit. Right. But it's also, <laughs> you don't like rules, but like you said, you don't want this relationship to end and therefore you still work through life together in a respectful way mm -hmm. where you, you know, what would hurt. Yeah. yeah, you know, hurt each other. Yeah. And just because you don't like rules doesn't mean you're just like, well, I'm just going to do whatever the fuck I want. And when he's got to right. figure it out, like, that's yeah. not how you roll. 
that's but no, it's, it's, it's trusting each other that we're going to make the right decisions right. for mm-hmm. ourselves and for each other and for our marriage. Yeah. And also knowing that like, it's okay if we make mistakes and, yep. and then you course correct and figure it out. I mean, we're all figuring out life as we go along. I think when we're younger, we look at people who are older and we think, well, they have it all figured out. And the older you get, the more you realize, no, we're all still just figuring it out as we go along. (laughs) And so, uh, and so it's okay to try something and that's not what you want or, you know? Yeah. So I I feel like we're doing a good job with that. Yeah, absolutely. I agree. Mm -hmm. Love it. Yes. Thank you both. Thank you so much for everything you've shared and so many (laughs) amazing thoughts and, uh, just really appreciate talking to both of you. Yeah. It's been awesome. Thanks. Thank you. Yeah. And we can let you get along with your Saturday morning. We did it before morning ended, so we can say that. Um, <laughs> and we, we hope you both have a fantastic day. And I mean, thank you again for coming up. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks for having us. Thank you both. And we're back. A huge thank you to Jenna and Wendy for coming on the show, being vulnerable, sharing your story. We absolutely love talking to you, and we so appreciate you coming on and sharing everything with us. Absolutely. Yeah, I had a great time. I had a great time editing it, and I'm just excited to get this one out there. So thank you. And to all of you Mono Poly people out there, uh, we'd love to hear what you think, because we get tons of emails from the Mono Poly people, the MPPs, as I call them. (laughs) And uh, we we just knew this one was going to really strike a chord. So, yeah, we're excited for that. Yes, and we'd love to hear feedback. Also, we want to do a quick reminder about our virtual meet and greets. Our next one is tonight. That's November 17th from 9 to 11 p.m. Eastern time. We have another one on Saturday, November 20th from 9 to 11 p.m. Eastern time. These are open to anyone. Go sign up at our website, Normalizing Navi normalizing non-monogamy.com and click on the community events tab and you'll find all of the information there also if you happen to miss these events don't worry we'll have some in december and you can go sign up for those as well and if you are starting to meet people out in the real world instead of our virtual meet and greets if you're doing in person in per in in per in <laughs> now you your your mispronunciation has become infectious you can't blame me i'm going to <laughs> If you happen to be meeting people in person, uh, we would highly recommend and love for you to use the website and service stdcheck.com to get tested for STIs. This is how Emma and I get tested. We've been using the service for years. We love it. We use it frequently. Well, every six months or so. Not like that frequent. We're not like <laughs> daily visitors. But anyway, we use the service and we love it. And we've gotten a lot of feedback that other people love it as well. So it is affordable. It is fast. It costs about $130 for a 10 panel test. If you use the links on our website and get yourself a $10 discount, which also helps support the show financially. And we're greatly appreciative of that. There are links in the show notes for the pot for your podcast player or on our website, normalizingmonogamy.com. You can either click on the podcast show notes or go to the resources tab. Links are all over the place. If you can't find them, get yourself an eye doctor too. <laughs> and uh, thank you in advance for being awesome sexual health advocates. Yes, we can't thank you enough. Next week, we have an interview with Dave. We got a returner. We do. So Part two. Dave was previously on episode 166 with his partner, Shannon. And this time, he comes back by himself and continues the conversation. Yes. Awesome conversation. And we're really excited to be putting it out there. As always, we hope to see you next week. We hope you enjoyed today's episode. And if you have any questions, feedback, thoughts, or love to send our way, head over to our website find the contact us page and send us an email or a voicemail and you'll hear back from us. And if you don't check your spam folder, we always reply. Yes. (laughs) And that's it. Bye everyone. Thanks for listening.